love a kappa and a good chinwag? The story has real life stories to inspire and make you smile. Weekdays on Vision and on demand in the app. A biblical perspective on life, culture, and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Well, you'll know that there are dramatic stories in the Bible, like the story of Joseph in the Old Testament, when he woke up one morning thinking it would be a day like any other. He didn't know that later that day he would be sold into slavery by his brothers and taken off to Egypt. Well, Bill Muhlenberg's been reflecting on stories like Joseph's, and Bill is back with us. Hey, Bill, welcome back to 2020. Great to be back. Uh, Bill, not too many of us have a bad day like Joseph. Uh, it's it's worth reflecting on, though, isn't it, uh, that he did wake up one morning and uh, things didn't go as planned. Yeah, well, absolutely. Um, I think all of us expect to live a kind of normal daily life, right? Wake up in the morning, do what you did yesterday and the day before, and I guess Joseph would have had that in mind. Uh, just another day uh, with the family, with his brothers, uh, but as we know, things changed that day very radically. Change for Joseph, change for his family, change for what would become the nation of Israel, change for the world, really, right? Messiah comes through this line the whole bit. Talk about a, a change in situation. And the whole point, which really got me thinking about this, I was looking at a expository commentary on book of Genesis, and as we know, of course, a full quarter of the book is devoted to the Joseph story. So one line just jumped off the page of this commentary where the guy said, like Joseph, none of us knows what any given day will bring. Uh, that sure was the case with Joseph. It was the case for me long ago when I became a Christian, perhaps for many of the listeners as well. A very unexpected turn of events really turns your life around and turns your family and uh, uh, career around. So uh, amazing insights we can get from Joseph and his story. Well, we do want to get on to your story, and I know that uh, some listeners will be fascinated with your hippie background. Uh, but let's talk about one word, which is very important if we're understanding where God fits uh, in those times when we have a bad day. And that is this word providence. Sometimes we think providence, that's got to do with uh, God giving things. Um, but I guess when we're talking from a scriptural point of view, it's, it's about God maneuvering the pieces on a chessboard and uh, things moving into place don't always feel good for us. How do you describe the providence of God if we're talking about Joseph's story and before we get to yours? Yeah, well, we have that clearly uh, spoken of throughout Scripture. Joseph's story is just one of a zillion. Uh, of course, as always, it's a mystery, but we have to hold together two biblical truths. You've nailed one of them. God is in control. He does uh, bring about his purposes. He can control the weather. He can control uh, the actions of kings. He can control all kinds of things to bring about good purposes. And yet the other core truth, right, is people make moral decisions. People are accountable for what they did. So we know uh, after reading those, uh, what, 13 chapters in Genesis, that although the brothers were culpable, guilty of great sins, their hatred and bitterness and envy of their brother, wanting to kill him, and then, well, at least one of them had a slightly better idea, well, we better not kill him, why don't we sell him into slavery? Uh, so all of them were responsible for what they did, they're accountable, uh, they were in that sense free moral agents, and yet we know, reading the story, uh, that God was actually behind everything, even some of these bad choices of the brothers, so much so as the verse you've already alluded to, right? Genesis 50, 20. You guys meant it to me for evil, but God meant it to me for good. So Joseph had no bitterness, no anger. I mean, he was languishing in prison, right, for a while. Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him. He stood strong morally. He ended up being thrown in jail for that. 
I mean, just imagine everything uh, being sold into slavery and then th uh, thrown into jail for being falsely accused. Now, you and I, I think, certainly me, I could be bitter. I could be mad at God. I could be upset. I could say, where are you, God, for heaven's sakes? But Joseph had such a strong faith, he could say, you guys actually meant it for evil. God all along meant this for good, everything slavery, time in prison, the whole bit, God was working his plans out. So that's great faith and that's great trust. And that's the kind of belief in God's providential care that we always got to keep in mind, even though it can be a bit hard to do so at times. Well, there's so many of us might be doing our thing, uh, going our own way, uh, even enjoying our rebellion against those things that we mm. might know are true and right and godly. And there's a sense in which I know you've been reflecting on your own personal testimony story. I wonder, Bill, I know listeners will be very intrigued and interested to hear about your hippie past. Um, give us an insight here into what was going on before you had an encounter with God and uh, maybe something similar to what happened with Joseph and God's providence. Mm. Yeah, uh, long story. We got to make it short, obviously. Um, yeah, same thing. Woke up one morning. Uh, I think I got it right. We can say maybe August 15, I think, uh, 1971. So that's a long time ago, over a half century ago. But I did finally write up my story, my testimony in a four part piece. But yeah, August 1971. I think it was a Saturday morning. I woke up. I mean, I wasn't working. Uh, Monday through Friday, so I was free to do what I was pretty much doing every day anyway. That was get a lot of drugs, uh, get high on a lot of dope, and listen to a lot of rock music. That was kind of what my life as a kind of bummed out hippie at age 18 had degenerated to. So yeah, another morning, wake up, what am I going to do? Oh, well, I think I'll get stoned, I'll get some more albums. So a friend actually in my small town in Wisconsin was driving to the capital, Madison, Wisconsin, uh, bigger and better record stores there, bigger and better bags of dope you could find in Madison. So I drove with him, went to Madison, bought three albums. Uh, I can remember one or two. Some of you might recall the Moody Blues. So the latest Moody Blues album was one of them. I got two more, bought a bag of dope, psilocybin, I think in this case, the magic mushroom, as we called it. So right, ordinary day, normal day for me, went back to my small hometown, got on my push bike, was riding to a friend's house, three albums under my arm, bag of dope in my pocket, and another old hippie gal I knew, uh, hadn't seen for a while, she was driving with some friends in the other direction. She stopped pulled the car over. She called me, Bill, Bill, come here. Come, I got to talk to you. And she had been to a commune in the mountains of New Mexico, almost 2,000 miles away. It was a Christian commune, although kind of weird, kind of cultic. But she, this old hippie friend, had found the Lord. She had found Jesus. So here I was, minding my own business, right? Bicycling to a friend's, going to listen to my three new albums, going to get high once again, as I've been doing for years. Uh, I never did get to smoke that dope, never did get to listen to those three albums. She started talking to me simple stuff like a hippie would do. You know, Jesus said he knows the birds in the air and he cares for the, you know, the simple things. He knows the hairs on your head. So for a hippie, I didn't get fancy apologetics arguments. I just got kind of hippie-ish gospel and I was so desperate, so bummed out, so suicidal that I thought, well, yeah, I got, I got to do it. I got to do it. So we slept, uh, found a friend's house. We both slept there. And next morning, I grabbed my sleeping bag and the two of us hitchhiked back to the mountains of New Mexico. Now, like I say, that Saturday morning when I woke up, little did I know that my entire world would change, right? I would become a Christian and, you know, here I am talking to you every week. Did I know that was going to happen 50 odd years ago? Nope. So it was a funny morning, uh, like every other morning, but God had a different plan, a radically different plan. And uh, that's true. I think for many of us, you think going to be a normal day. God has a, a different idea in mind. 
You know, a couple of things to pick up on here, Bill, and it's always fascinating hearing the story of believers uh, who have become significant in some ways in the ministry role that they have, and I don't think anyone is going to disagree that you are so overflowing with wonderful wisdom on this program every week. A couple of things, Joe, to mention there. (laughs) When your hippie girl friend uh, picked you up, she was travelling in a different direction. The opposite direction. Uh, yep. There's something significant in that. And you mentioned the word desperation. And I wonder whether you've got a reflection here, because no doubt there'll be listeners thinking, uh, what could God be doing with my life now in his providence uh, to turn me around? Do I have to look out for someone le- going in an opposite direction to, to take me away from where I am? a little bit like Joseph, um, the yep. desperation. What are your thoughts around those special words? Yeah, no, good point. I hadn't tied those things together with Joseph. But, yeah, I mean, thing is I had heard, right, as a hippie, various Christians sharing the gospel before, you know, didn't have any impact on me. And, you know, I was quite, you know, I'd hear a Christian argue with another Christian and I, uh, you know, I don't want any of this baloney. And I had done all the stupid stuff you do as a hippie back then, read all the books on Eastern religions, the Bhagavad Gita, the Upanishads, uh, you know, the Tibetan book of the dead, you know, I was kind of doing a search, but looking in all the wrong directions. And then Timothy Leary, the drug guru said, well, take a lot of LSD, right? You can find God on acid. Uh, well, didn't find God there either. Found the other guy, actually. Uh, so, you know, it was I was trying this stuff. I was kind of searching, but I was getting so, you know, I was really at the end of my rope, really just nowhere left to turn. So, uh, yeah, as you say, she came the opposite direction. And, you know, I could have taken a different route, by the way, right? Had I left three minutes later or taken a different route, I never would have seen her. I probably wouldn't be talking. You'd have to have another guest on right now, right? Just to fill in this time slot. So it's, you know, what God does, you just, well, providence, right? You know, here here she was coming this opposite direction. She sees me, she, they stop and the rest is history. So yeah, God is providently working things out. And then you even have to go back and say, well, maybe he was working out other things as well, allowing me to, get so low down and bummed out and depressed, right? If everything were going along swimmingly, I probably wouldn't have cared a word about what she told me when she met me. But because, well, God certainly allowed me to, you know, get uh, into this really low point in my life. Well, I, I jumped at the good news when I heard it. So again, God is providentially looking after everything in this life. And uh, if we're open and listening and allowing God to work, uh, amazing things can happen. Are things, do you think, Bill, the same for our human condition, um, that human nature is looking for uh, things that will, you know, perhaps give us the high. I mean, you were on those magic mushrooms or smoking whatever it was you were smoking. Um, people looking for answers. Uh, and there is a quiet desperation, if not a loud desperation in hearts. The human condition doesn't change. Uh, so when we hear of your story, is this something you think that there you know, people listening to our conversation right now, recognizing that, Uh, wait a minute, Um, I need to respond when I have these feelings of understanding that, you know, God is moving things in a direction and I need to align with what he's doing. Any thoughts here for the current human condition? Yeah, well, it's an old story. We try to fulfill meaning and purpose in our lives by all the wrong things, whether it's drugs or alcohol or advancing in your career or through sexual encounters, right? We, you know, God made us to have meaning and purpose and value and worth. But when we don't find it in the living God, we try to find it in every other way there is, and it's always going to be a dead end, right? Uh, At first, I actually wasn't taking drugs as a 15-year-old when some of my friends were. But like I say, when I heard you could find God, 
by taking the psychedelics. So then I thought, okay, I'll try it. But, you know, by the time I was 18, any search I was on was long gone. Now we just existed to get high every day and forget about our problems. So sadly, there's way too many other people like that. And, well, the truth is you can't, you know, a lot of people think, yeah, well, when I get old, I'll get right with God. But again, it's the same story. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Jesus had that famous parable, right? The uh, rich guy who thought, oh, I'll tear down my barn and build some bigger barns to hold all my stuff. And then what does God say? You fool, this day, this night, I'm going to require, you know, you, your life. So uh, the idea that we put things off, put off getting right with God, well, you can walk out the street today, got hit by a truck, and that's it. And then there's other practical things, right? We could go on all day. Every time you leave your home, if you're married, what should you do? You should give your spouse a big hug and say, I love you. Because it could be the last time you ever see them, right? So there's a lot of lessons here. Uh, Joseph gives so much and, you know, whole books have been written, devotional stories about the life of Joseph. But the Bible is full of stories like this. We need to learn the lessons, apply it to ourselves, and share it with others. You mentioned uh, you loved the music of the Moody Blues, although I don't think you got to listen to that album on that (laughs) day. Uh, Your music changed uh, by way of taste as well, and uh, you mention in the article we're talking about today uh, that one of your favourite songs in the early 1970s was from the group's second chapter of Acts and uh, a song, Which Way the Wind Blows. Uh, mm. There's something in there, too, about the providence of God. We don't know which way the wind blows. Any thoughts here from you about, you know, taking steps forward, even though you don't know where you're going, but actually uh, you're taking steps in faith when you move towards where God is? Yeah, well, it's been said, right? I think going back to Psalm 119, the word is a lamp unto my feet. And then they point out, right, a lamp is only good for about the next step or two that you take. A lamp isn't going to show you the next uh, 50 meters or whatever. Just next step, one step at a time. And yeah, second chapter of Acts. Uh, Barry McGuire, a lot of these guys were getting saved at the time. And yeah, it's, well, straight out of the Bible. You don't know which way the wind blows. You don't know what's around the corner. You don't know what's happening. God does. He certainly knows what's happening. But we, as Christians, certainly, we, well, that's where faith comes in. Trust. You don't know what the next step's going to bring. Again, so many things could be said. I didn't know when I first met who was going to be my wife all that uh, long ago, what, 1979, I think I first met her. I didn't know I'd go through a long, protracted, kind of hardcore battle with her and cancer, only to see her, you know, gone after 44 years of marriage. So probably that's another part of the story. God doesn't show us everything in the far future because we probably couldn't handle it if he did. But he gives us enough light and enough grace, one step at a time, one day at a time. So let's make sure we make good use of each day at a time. Well, Bill, uh, always great getting your insights. And for listeners who might like to read this article, uh, Do You Know What Tomorrow Holds? Uh, You'll be able to find that when you go to BillMuhlenberg.com or simply Google Culture Watch, one word. Uh, Bill, wonderful getting your insights, hearing your story. And why don't we listen in to that second chapter of Acts song, which you were talking about. And uh, for listeners who've been believers for a long time, you might really remember this, and it might have been meaningful for you in your early steps as a Christian believer. Uh, Bill Muhlenberg, thanks so much for joining us today on 2020. Many thanks. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.